What if you had a guide who could tell you how to bridge a gap between who you are today and who you are destined to be? What if each week you could hear a story of someone who has tried and succeeded, or perhaps tried and failed, but learned something in the process? Limitless Spirit is a weekly podcast where host Helen Todd interviews guests about topics and personal stories on defining life's purpose, pursuing personal growth, and developing a deeper faith in Christ. If we're not changing and we're not bringing change, we're not in the right place with the, you know, with our walk with the Lord, because we should always be in that place of changing, going higher and doing more with um, his presence and uh, reliance on him. And that's, I will say from the first mission trips I took to the, this last one, I have grown tremendously and changed tremendously in, um, because I'm depending on the Lord when I'm there or even to get there. Welcome back to another inspiring episode of the Limitless Spirit podcast. And in this episode, we continue to explore how fulfilling the Great Commission not only touches the lives of people that we witness to, but also deeply transforms our own. In this episode, I continue to bring spotlight to our latest mission to the country of Moldova, And I interviewed two ladies, one of them a missionary and the other one a girl who was deeply touched by this missionary in a very meaningful way. It is often said that travel broadens our horizons, but the mission trip takes us to a whole new level. Not only it allows us to experience realities of the communities much less fortunate than our own, it gives us the opportunity to offer help and hope and also offers us an absolutely unparalleled spiritual and personal growth. So whether you have been on a mission trip yourself or have always been curious about the impact of such missions, these conversations will speak to you in a very intimate and practical way. Our first guest, Cheryl Simpers, fulfilled her calling to go on a mission field for the first time after losing her husband, Mike, in a tragic car accident. And since then, she has made 15 mission trips with World Missions Alliance. A few weeks ago, she returned with us to Moldova for the third time. Well, before we dive into this and we're highlighting our Moldova mission this month, um, I wanted you to share with our listeners, how did Jesus change your life? You know, at World Missions Alliance, we believe that changed lives change lives. So let's get to the beginning of your story. How did Jesus change your life? I was raised in a Christian home. My father was a Bible teacher for 60 years, and he also taught in our home to us. And he didn't just read the Bible to us. He questioned us. So I've always had that foundation of believing in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But it took some hard things in my life before I realized that I had a very surface relationship with him. Before you share this, were you at at some point resentful of him making you study the Bible or did you enjoy it? No, I was not resentful. It would just was part of our, our everyday life. So, um, I didn't realize how important it was until I left for college and got out of the word. And it was like I was going into a deep, dark hole and doing things I wouldn't normally have done. And I turned around quickly there because of that. uh, I had never experienced darkness that way in my life because I had been in the light. (laughs) So and then when I uh, went through a divorce after 25 years of marriage, I was so broken and I said, okay, God, I know you in my head, but I want to know you deep in my heart. I want to know you like Moses wanted to know you. I'm going to see you like Moses wanted to see you. And from that point, Jesus started to make himself so real to me. And I actually lost my job um, the day after I prayed that prayer and spent a whole year with the Lord because I had prayed, God, I'm going to date you for a year, meaning I wanted to know him. And so I spent that year with the Lord and literally I lost track of time. I would, 12 hours would go by and I'd look at the clock thinking it was only like five or 10 minutes. And um, it was a very needed time in my life 
to turn to the Lord because that was when he started to lay on me. He had called me to the nations. And it was actually when I read uh, Jeremiah 1.5 during that time that the Lord Jesus spoke to me through that verse saying, I've called you to be a prophet to the nations even um, before you were put in your mother's womb. And so from that point, I knew the call on my life, but he had to train me and uh, put me in places where I would learn how to pray, um, taking authority and using the word as the powerful weapon it is and, and knowing how much he is covering us um, when we do these things. So if I um, asked you maybe in one sentence to describe how did it make you different going from head knowledge of God to the heart knowledge of God? Did you feel like it changed you as a person? Very much so, because before I was identifying or my identity is in what I did instead of having the identity as the beloved daughter of the Lord and to know that I was loved. I took a lie of the enemy from very young that I was not loved, was not lovely, would not be loved. And I think many people, particularly women, take that lie. And so Jesus radically changed how I saw myself and how I saw other people. This is actually quite awesome, Cheryl. So let's talk about how you ended up in Moldova. What what really attracted you to this particular mission? How did you know that you were called to go there? This is my third time in Moldova, the first two times in trends in Eastern Moldova. And I actually heard you and Chuck at an end-time handmaiden meeting in Jasper, Arkansas, and you were talking about Moldova. And the Lord told me, you're going to Moldova with them. And it was like three years before I went. But ever since that trip, Moldova has been on my heart and um, the people on my heart. And the Did minister- you even know where Moldova was? Because a lot of time people don't. <laughs> they confuse Moldova and Maldives, which is the island. <laughs> <laughs> No, so, no were where. you pretty clear about where that country was? I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. As a matter of fact, I'd only been on one mission trip, and that was to Swaziland, Africa, within uh, 2007, I believe it was. So um, I hadn't been for a while. But from the time he told me, it took like three years before I went. But each time that you've had a trip that... Because not every one of your trips to Moldova has he called me to go on. But this is the third one. And it was so clear in my spirit um, because when he tells me I'm going to um, a nation like Moldova, his presence gets very strong. And it's like I know that I know by his spirit and my spirit that is it's quickening me. It's making me jump in my spirit with joy. (laughs) And um, every trip I go on now with you guys, I get this in my spirit on the ones I know I'm supposed to go on, just this quickening and uh, excitement for what he's going to do in that nation. And so when he told me I was going to Moldova, I mean, I was telling people I'm going to Moldova and I would just get so excited even telling people. This is what I love about you, Cheryl, is how in tune you are with the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life. Because in a walk with Christ, I believe that timing is everything. Um, Sometimes we have the best intentions of wanting to do something for God or with God. But so often we miss the timing because, you know, we want to do it on our terms and our timing. And you are very, very particular about waiting for God's timing. And that's personally what I think makes your mission so powerful and effective when you do go. So um, that is uh, that is incredible that um, you you really wait on that confirmation. And now because you've practiced this for such a long time, it's not um, strange for you, you know. You, you yes. know that feeling. And so I think that is important. And I think a lot of times people say, well, how do you know? What is the what is the specific sign? Well, if we practice listening and waiting for God's timing, eventually we're going to get it down. Sometimes it's a hit and miss. And God honors our desire to serve him. But it is when we are 
combining our desire with waiting on his timing is that's when, as I, as I say, the magic happens, the most powerful and incredible things happen. So how did this trip meet your expectations and maybe how did it surprise you in what ways? <laughs> there were so many things about this trip that were powerful. His presence, so powerful. Being on the prayer team, uh, there was a medical team as well, but I was on the prayer team and just seeing how God was moving and delivering and healing and giving people words of encouragement, including the pastors. And I think that's one of the biggest parts of him calling me to the nations is that um, gift of his to be able to encourage leaders in areas that they don't get much encouragement. But also I um, volunteered to help with the, the kids camp. So I was praying and when I found out I was going to be leaving <laughs> the 11 and 12 years old, old, I started praying in the spirit. And I said, okay, God, what do you want to do? How do you want to do it? And actually one of the activities surprised me because it was, he said, do a word search of my names, Jesus' names, and they were taking English classes. So to do it in English was actually to help them as well, but also to learn in English the names of Jesus. It was so powerful. In matter of fact, adults sat down and said, can you make more copies? We want to do it too. So both the interpreters and um, the people that were helping with the 11, 12-year-olds, it was great. And it I was just so grateful to God for giving me that idea. So did you feel a bit stretched? Uh, I, I don't think that you expected to be working with the kids. And normally intercessory prayer is a big part of your ministry. Did you feel challenged a little bit? Um, I had been, I had worked in the school system for 10 years as a librarian and a substitute teacher for kindergarten through um, eighth grade. So I had worked in the past with children, but I didn't expect <laughs> to be leading the 11 and 12 year olds. But every time that I'm asked to do something that is not in my comfort zone or that I normally do, this is where you really key in to asking the Lord, okay, what would you have me to do and how would you have me to do it? And it's been amazing what he's done in these nations when that happens, even I told you before going to um, Macedonia last year where I was asked to teach art to um, special needs kids and adults for the Albanian Muslims living in Macedonia. And art was my worst subject in school. <laughs> <laughs> I love that I story. Thank videos. you for remembering it. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing was that, that um I'm praying for, we were, it took like four hours to get there. So now I'm praying in this, and I kept trying to convince Kenna that I was not the right person. And she's, no, Cheryl, you're it. But when I got there and I got up in front of the, the families, because it was the moms and dads there with their special needs kids and adults, the love of God was so strong in there. The love of God on me, I could feel myself glowing and alive with his love in a way I had not been before. And to do something that I know that was totally out of my ability, but God was downloading in my head what to draw and how to draw it. And it just absolutely, this is one of my favorite mission trip stories with World Mission Alliance is that he will equip you to do what's needed for the moment. This is a completely awesome. Um, for one, I can totally relate because I would hate to be asked to lead the art club. <laughs> so, so your story is an inspiration to me. If I ever find myself in that position, that um, you know, God gives us the right words when we're put on trial before leaders, and God gives us the ability to create art if we have to do it for the kids. <laughs> And that yes. is awesome. But going back to your Moldova mission, um, what were what was maybe one or two most meaningful moments for you when you felt like you were really changing someone's life? Well, I had quite a few people that knew that I was walking in um, a gift of the Holy Spirit. 
young people that came to me and asked for prayer. And God was very faithful to minister to each one. Now I want to pause my interview with Cheryl for just a moment and share with you a testimony from one of those young people, a 17-year-old Moldovan girl, Dina, whose life was deeply impacted by Cheryl's ministry. Did anybody on the team minister to you in a certain way? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, uh, this is Mrs. Cheryl. Uh, we had a clinic in the church. So um, before clinic, I uh, got to the prayer room. So I got to her and uh, I just uh, said that, uh, pray for me. And if you see something or God tells you something, just say it. I don't have something like special you to pray for me. So she's, she started to pray for me. But... Um, before that, um, I have prayed for something in my life, like more than three months. And uh, I was really confused about some things that are happening in my life. And uh, she just started to pray for what I wanted, like like that. <laughs> so I was really, uh, th this was really interesting. And uh, this influenced me a lot, because she really started to pray about the, um, she gave me an answer that I have prayed for more than three months. Did this make you feel like God heard you? God knows what's going on in your heart? Yes, of course. Of course. And now I, I know what to do next. <laughs> if Dina was the only person who received her breakthrough as a result of Cheryl's mission, it would have been well worth it. Her joy from this encounter with Cheryl just melts your heart. But there was more. Let's go back to Cheryl's story of how she touched other people's lives while receiving a profound transformation herself. Um, but the one I will say that touched me the most, and um, it still touches me to think about it, because we went into a park to minister, and um, our interpreters were all young, and they're like young evangelists, and they had different things. And my part on that was they had this chair called the miracle chair that they carried into the park, a real nice chair, and um, they put in the, their language this um, miracle chair. And we were to invite people to come sit in the miracle chair and we would pray for that miracle they wanted. And the presence of God was so strong, but there was two little boys that stopped on their bikes. The one, he jumped off immediately. He wanted a, he wanted a miracle. He wanted a phone, but it was the second one that really touched my heart because when he sat down, he said, would you, I want a miracle where my family is concerned. And when I started to pray for him, God showed me what was going on in his family and to pray, pray accordingly for that miracle, for God to touch those family members and bring peace in their household. It's those kind of things on the trips that you don't expect that touch you um, exceedingly. And it is very true that, you know, we we go on a mission because Jesus commanded us to go and we go with the idea that we are going to help um, bring in the harvest, plant the seeds. But in the end, we receive so much more than yes. we can ever give. And this is the beauty, the beauty of working in God's harvest. It's so rewarding in so many ways. So, Cheryl, I, what would you say to a person? Because I encounter so many people that have this desire. They, they feel called. They know they're called um, to be a part of the Great Commission, to do something. But sometimes uh, maybe it's fear that holds people back. Sometimes it's lack of confidence in their own abilities or being able to bring something to the table. Um, Sometimes it just feels overwhelming, um, and perhaps they have never done this before. What would you say to a person like that? In my experience of those who have come for the first time on these mission trips, they were different when they left. 
I saw how God had touched them, how God had helped them to flow in what he had called them to flow in. And um, where they came out of their shell, like giving their testimonies. And the, uh, and every testimony I have been on these trips, and there's been quite a few, um, the presence of God was strong in their testimony to minister to people that were listening that needed that testimony, that, that people would start crying and come up for prayer to that person who gave their testimony. And it forever changes you. It's no longer trying to do anything out of your own ability, it is literally the, from the whole way, God coming in to empower you to um, give you the means. I mean, like in the beginning, when I started doing these trips, uh, I was like, how do I pay for this, Lord? You're telling me to go. You're telling me when to go. Now, how am I paying for this? And I know there's different means for fundraising. But at that time, I was dealing with a lot of things after my husband was killed by a drunk driver. And he didn't leave a will. And so I'm dealing also with court because it was a, a court case. And so I'm dealing with a lot of things. And I so when he told me I was going with you guys on my first trip was to Indonesia. And I had no means of going. And I was literally having open visions of palm trees and beautiful beaches. And I said, Lord, am I going to Florida for rest? He goes, no, you're going to Indonesia with World Mission Alliance. And I said... Okay, Lord, I commit to go, but you make the way because I am not in the place right now to get, you know, fundraise. And he said, and so within two and a half weeks, I had all the money. And that's another thing. A lot of people don't go on trips because they don't see how to make the way financially. But I'm telling you, God has made the way for me every single trip. You know, I love the theme for this year because if we're not changing and we're not bringing change we're not in the right place with the, you know, with our walk with the Lord, because we should always be in that place of changing, going higher and doing more with his presence and uh, reliance on him. And that's, I will say from the first mission trips I took to the, this last one, I have grown tremendously and changed tremendously in, um, because I'm depending on the Lord when I'm there or even to get there. This is very true. It um it is it is like the university of faith, I believe. Yes. And uh <laughs> I I experience this every time and I have done missions work for 30 years now, but um every time I become involved in the next mission, I know that I go to the next level and I would yes. not want to miss that for anything. Amen. When you embrace the Great Commission, the world becomes your classroom and compassion becomes your guide. I invite you to let these stories speak to your heart and allow them to fuel your own personal journey into this beautiful adventure of building the kingdom across the globe together with Jesus. Along the way, you will discover new things about the world he created and about yourself and the mystery of how God meets our deepest needs while we serve Him in meeting the needs of others. Thank you for listening. Until next time, I'm Helen Todd. Limitless Spirit Podcast is produced by World Missions Alliance. We believe that changed lives change lives. If you want to see your life transformed by Christ's love, or if you want to help those who are hurting and hopeless and discover your greater purpose in serving Christ through short-term missionary work, check out our website, rfwma.org, and find out how to get involved.